Okay, we are live here. This is Reverend Brianna Lynn with the Wild Woman Rhapsody, and we're going to talk a little bit about race and oneness and a spiritual perspective on this conversation around race because it is so dynamic and so many layers. And I want to make sure that I'm getting this to our beautiful sister, Alexandra, because she's going to come on here with me. So I want to figure out how to invite her. Um, so once Alexandra pops on, I can invite her. That's the thing. Okay. So I'm just going to keep going until she comes on, but she has an incredible program that she is offering to the community that basically is, is if she gets 35 people to sign up, she's going to run it for a hundred bucks a piece. And this is an incredible process that she brings people through in the conversation around race and, uh, and spirituality. Thank you, Amy. I'm so glad that you're here live. I'm going to try to tag see if there's anyone that I can. Yeah, there it is. Okay. I'm learning how to do this and learning how to share and invite people on, but I'm really excited to have this conversation. So thank you all for being here. As soon as out there, she is perfect. Okay. I'm going to invite her to come on. No, not that one. I want to invite Alexandra to come on so that we can have this amazing conversation. There it is. Yay. Um, so I'm just going to wait for it to re-register because it's only showing a few people who are coming on, but I'm really excited to have you all here today. Luna is very excited to have you all here to have this conversation of how we can amplify this conversation around equality and race and all of these different pieces. Alexandra, can you see me? Can you hear me? Um, I'm trying to add you, but for some reason it's not letting me. So I'm going to um, allow you to request to join. So all you do is request to join and then you can um, request to join this video so that we can have a little chat about this. So what I'm really inspired by is being in a conversation. Luna, no, down. Luna got very worked up about this conversation. Um, yes, but did not get an invite. Alexandra says, okay, I'm inviting you again. It's sent. Um, so I just want to dive into the conversation around the possibility of what it could look like to amplify this conversation around racism in a spiritual way and to really dive into it with our eyes wide open, hearts wide open, allowing ourselves to learn as we go along and especially from those who are ready to, to share. Um, and so I really would love for you to come on, Alexandra. I sent you an invite and for some reason it's not going. We may have to stop this and try again. I really don't want to. I don't see you on my viewers and I have guest requests on. So see if you can request pop on. There it is. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It's connecting. Yes, we did it. Hi. Hi. I forgot I had to do this on my phone and not my computer. So I was trying to figure it out. Got it. Got it. Hello. Hi. It's so good to see you. You too, sister. How are you? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I keep my little joke right now is I bought property in the eye of the storm. I'm just setting up shop right in the center of the storm that is just like life and emotions and personal relationships and structural relationships and everything's just like, and it's perfect timing, right? Like we've been talking about the shift. We've been talking about the catalyzing. We've been talking about, so I just see what you're doing as, as another level of what gets to be addressed in the deconstruction of what has been um, yes. a system of domination, right? So everything that has yes. been a system of domination, <laughs> whether it's, lightly. you know, structural or personal is getting deconstructed. So I want to just hear you and, and hear a little bit about this program that you're offering and just put it out into the world so we can share this, this beautiful body of work that you're here to birth. Yeah. Um, so, you know, my root work, what I'm initiated to do, the, the work that I, I've been doing is I work with women trans who are going through transformation, who are um, uh, creating empowerment in their lives, you know, diving into spirituality or developing their gifts. And um, I started noticing in the last few years that who I was, the people I was working with were like wanting to dive into subjects that I've been immersed in for years in my personal life. And that is racism, identity, um, justice, uh, the ending of oppression. You know, I work with a lot of empaths and a lot of powerful, sensitive women. So a lot of women working on like vampires in their life and, mm. and systems, you know, psychopathic systems. And so all that is related to, to racism, all of that's mm. uh, related to white supremacism. And so I was like, 
I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to start putting that work out there. And I did. And at the beginning of last year, I was like, I'm going to start putting all of my work into this thing called the Spiritual Foundations Library. And it's going to have all the work I've done over all these years. And I'm going to, in 2021, I'm going to do my anti-racism from a spiritual perspective. Well, mm -hmm. 2020 came and it was like this put, it was like, you have to, you have to start bringing in like this you know, you have to do it earlier. Mm. So um, I started really putting out there this work that I've, I've been doing for, God, it feels like a lifetime on looking at anti-racism from a spiritual perspective. And by spiritual, I just mean that which is from men. I'm not referring to any specific religion, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I, I started doing, I started teaching classes and I, I have my one-on-ones and everything. Um, but what I realized was a lot of people who who were coming into this work had been experiencing some misconceptions about this work mm. had been ha weren't able to knew that they wanted to to be doing something but didn't quite know what their responsibilities were um were feeling like they were being pushed in a way that 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 made them not want to do it mm. um not understanding some of the terms and concepts that were were out there mm -hmm. um and ultimately were kind of either by privilege or or just by fear just kind of like not paying attention mm. um or or you know pushing it away and so um so i create i create spaces where i'm not going to be i don't use uh shaming or guilting or goading or any oppressive tactics uh i create spaces that are empowering um and and healing because when we're talking about dismantling racism and white supremacism these are healing these are healing things for mm. everybody mm -hmm. not just marginalized community or people it's healing for everybody yes and a lot especially when we're talking about moms mm -hmm. um and parents people who have seated you know they have skin in the game they've seated, literally <laughs> literally <laughs> like they have living seeds in this world yes. Um, there's a lot of pressure, a lot of like people can be in, a, parents can be, especially moms are like in acute stress a lot of the time. Mm. Um, and so, and so I thought it was important to design my work because I had, I was already working with a lot of moms and other, other things like 90% of people, women I work with are, are moms. Mm. Um, and so, or people in childhood, so like teachers and community, community giver, community holders and everything. And I wanted to create my work to be something where people are receiving, uh, that they, there's not a lot of to-dos, but receiving uh, philosophy and perception so that they can confidently navigate all of this. Mm -hmm. And so that they could figure out how is this tied in with me and my spirit so that I can keep doing this. And so that it doesn't feel like work that I have to clock in and clock out at or something that doesn't like take over my life, but it's something that fits into the flow of my life and makes sense for me and what I'm building. And so that's the basis for all of my work around anti-racism. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. One thing yeah. that you said that really lands for me um, is, you know, the the questioning of white supremacy, the questioning of the system, the the dismantling of that is ultimately dismantling the entire system, right? Like it's not working for white people. White supremacy doesn't work for white people either. Like let's, <laughs> there are certain privileges and accesses, but when anyone is imprisoned by a system, it is inherently going to feel oppressive to everyone involved. To everyone. And that's the piece for me as a white presenting woman that, that was a real turning point for me being like an anti-racist into someone who pursued anti-racism education and started yeah. to want to be more engaged in this conversation, not just as a bystander or like, oh, I'm anti-racist. So I'm like in the clear as a white presenting yeah. woman, but as like an yeah. active ally, um, how do I share my heart from listening and from speaking in a way that's authentic, but also knowing that these systems are so a part of my filter on the world, the way I regard people of color, the way that I'm told to regard myself and to be yeah. really open to the idea that I can't see nor know all of it because that's part of the programming is the blindness that I as a white presenting person have within the programming to not see myself as a racist. That's part of, that's part of the whole thing yeah. is if I could be blindly oppressive, then I won't address the oppression because as a good person, of course, I don't want to be oppressive. 
Of course. Right. Of, oh, yeah. But that's part of it. And that's why I think work like what you do is critical where you are working with moms, people who are teaching the next generation and you speak to a variety of people. I've been following you on Facebook for almost two years now. Like I see the range that you speak to people. You have people from the black community. You have people from the Latina community. You have people from the white community You have folks from all over. And yes. you do have a specific bridging with white presenting people that mm -hmm. I notice in like the, your comments, right? Just like noticing yes. you have a very specific reach. And so why I wanted to bring you on in this group is, or on my personal page is as a white presenting woman, most white presenting women, I, I attract mostly white presenting women into my work and what I do. Yes. And I just want to say like, this is the woman here, Alexandra, who can help white presenting women with the conversation of racism and spirituality without us sounding like spiritual bypassing bitches. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the way you put it, I mean, yeah, I mean, the thing, I mean, again, there's a lot of undoing, there, mm -hmm. there's a lot of unlearning, and, um, you know, my, my, part of my journey uh, was being in spiritual communities and talking about my experiences and, and being just completely like, we do not want to hear it. This is not real. We are all one. Um, you're making this up, you know, and it, and it, there was a time when I was just like, what am I doing? And it's not, it's, it's a system and I can't, sit here or you're creating like, this reality right have they have they told yeah. you that one you're creating yes. a racist reality babe yes you are being divisive and you know i'd be like one of the things is like okay racism in, in and of itself and how it's created is divisive in and itself it's very difficult to talk about about all of it without it being divisive in some way whether it's inside you or in the words that are said mm. um also th the words and the phrases and the vocabulary are changing the thought is so fast evolving that even if somebody read all the books and all, you know, knew all the history in four months, there's going to be an update. There's going to totally. be a point, you know, 89. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so, I mean, it's, I, the point I want to get across to a lot of people is that you have to be an explorer and you have to be willing to evolve. Um, because, because this is not something that is going to be fixed or rebalanced with like, right. A click of the fingers you know this is not one weekend that... workshop a weekend work exactly right. how to be exactly. anti-racist you listed on audible it, it, that, that's, not the the end. End. <laughs> that's not the end yes and so that's why i keep teaching like i keep holding true like you really have to find out what it what is it inside yourself because i think a lot of no i don't think this is my experience i'll tell you after the lynching george floyd i i said out loud i was like hey if you're not taking action we can't be friends and that was mostly for the protection of other people because i knew that if they tried to be uh close in with me that they were going to have a hard time because this is what i was focusing on mm. mainly mm. you know and i had a lot of people who were who thought that my saying take action meant something very specific a i got a reaction from the people who were like well i don't want to go to the front line and this and another and i was like where did i ever infer that you have to be on the street getting rubber bulleted by the police where did i ever so there's this idea because people are wis listening to like this trauma that's like uh, being uprooted and has been uprooted and like people who are just sick and tired and people who are losing life and people who are just trying to get some semblance of balance back and en ending oppression and people are just just like in rage and fury um when you witness that <laughs> and, and they say you need to do something it's very easy for us to then it's very not us it's very easy for the people witnessing to go i have to do everything i have to be where the most energy is right now in this moment the front lines oh my gosh i can't do that why are they asking that's not what i'm certainly asking i would say it's not what the majority of anybody in a marginalized community is asking what's what's being asked is do something consistently and commit to it. And that's going to be different for every single person, but we do need everybody on board. And that takes dealing with your feelings. Yes. At the very minimum, yeah. dealing with your feelings at the very minimum, and then figuring out from inside, what am I attracted to that? I, I can be effective in mm -hmm. what, it, you know, not everybody is going to be at a protest on the front lines. I, that's not me mm -hmm. personally. That's not me. 
Um, it, it might be the way you educate in your family and, and staying very uh, connected to that and, and making sure it's something that's a consistent thing in your community. Um, there's so many avenues. Yeah. And if we look at it from that scared place, we're not Oh, Hello, so I'm good. back. I'm here. We're back. We're back. We did it. We I had to shake the phone a little bit because you were flowing so strong and the energy was like, and it was like, oh. <laughs> they tried to shut us down. Tried to shut down the truth. <laughs> there was a piece that you said that I that I am am so loving. It's like it, you don't have to do everything. You don't have to be on the front lines. It's yes. like choose something in your community that you can consistently show up for whether that's the way you're parenting or having conversations with people, or maybe it is the front lines for some people, but maybe you are in the front lines. Maybe. Right. But I think this idea that everyone's gift can be a gift to deconstructing the, the systems of, of oppression that we have on our planet. Like it can be a joy. It can be a beautiful thing. Of course, yes. there's going to be challenging conversations. Yes. There's anger. Yes, there's confusion, but this is actually part of the spiritual path, right? Like I feel the same way about money or sexuality. Like these are sticky. These are difficult. These are hard yes. things. They've been, they've been traumatized. They've been, bleh. and we could just be like, no, I'm not going to talk about sexuality or we're just going to pretend money doesn't exist. Like we all know what happens when that happens. And I think we're at the same thing in terms of our identity and the beauty of the uniqueness of what we now call race, which ultimately is just lineage, like to honor our family lineages, to honor our ancestry, to get in touch with that and to be able to celebrate that and also honor that the mixing lines of our ancestry, there's some fucked up shit. There's some real fucked up shit that's held in our bodies that we can trigger when we're around each other. Yeah. And we can clear that shit. That ultimately anti-racism work is also like our ancestral clearing. As white presenting people, like yes. this is our opportunity to clear that shit while you avoid in it. No, you want it. You yes. Want it. You want yes. it. You want it. So I just, yes, that's I'm so true. So that's deeply. so true. And I, I want to add to that too. You know, the, the course that I have coming up that I want to talk about moms and race, we don't get deeply into ancestry. We don't have time because this, the moms and race special community course is, is just, we're only together for three times. Yeah. But the, my core work, the anti-racist journey, which is on my website, that core work there, we talk about ancestry for a whole section yes. about how we rebuild ancestral legacies, how we, how we are actually stopping cycles. And, you know, you talked really just now um, powerfully about, uh, you know, the mixing that goes on. There's this writing and I can't remember her name, but if anybody's watching, look up uh, rape colored skin. Mm. And it's a woman talking about her mixed ancestry. You know, I'm from new Orleans, like, mm half of my family is is like white frenchmen so mm -hmm. i feel that even though i'm not mixed presenting like i definitely have have th those things that i'm wrestling with in my family yeah. I, I also have like chickasaw in my family too mm -hmm. and I, I i think it would be challenging to find many people in this country who don't have some sort of ancestry in their line where inside them in their own blood there is this like mm -hmm. <laughs> looking for i mean if you're english and care. scott you know what i mean like even in the you're yeah. white presenting english and scotsman they didn't even get along the, yes, someone from the outside world can't even physically tell the difference but if you call an englishman a scotsman or a scotsman an englishman like that's conflictual historically yeah. for almost like 800 fucking years and they look the fucking same to outside people you know what i'm saying but like to understand the dynamics of what the systems of domination yes. have been, that it is about yeah. race, it's bigger than race, and it's also about race, and specifically in the United States, to uh -huh. not have the conversation about race within our families is so irresponsible. It's just I irresponsible. I believe so. It, it, is, it is irresponsible, and for those people who are feeling pressure on hearing it said that way, know that you can also do something about it without it being a whole bunch of pressure right you can you have it's an opportunity fully I it's love an opportunity that. i and, love that and i want to say that you know if you have if you are any kind of curious 
this is what I hold true. If you are curious about anything, right? If, if you are activated, sometimes it's triggered. If you're activated, curious, something in you is, is paying attention. Because a lot of people don't pay attention to racism, white supremacy, all these things that we're talking about. A lot of people are just like, nope, <laughs> no thank you. Right. Right. But if you're activated by in any way, if you're curious about it in any way, um, there's something inside your spirit that's like, okay, there's wisdom coming for you to to be a rebalancer of this, to be a healer in this. There's a reason that you have that inside you. Mm -hmm. And as we know, if we do not pay attention to what is coming through us mm -hmm. in our spirit, it will eventually start to hurt. Mm -hmm. And this is the pressure that a lot of people are feeling. Mm -hmm. Not only the pain that comes from this density of racism, white supremacism out there that is affecting us all the time is in our air and our water and everything we do, but it's also this part of our spirit that's like, hey, you have something to contribute. Yeah. Hey, there's something here where you can like get healing if you actually engage with the subject yes. and the right philosophy, the right teacher, and then we ignore it. That's just like a wound on top of, that's like putting salt on a wound, well, you know? So that's, that's something that's really important to me that, that, that people understand. And I also want to address that the course, the Moms and Race Special Community course that's coming up in March that, that you know, I'm here to like say hello and tell people about um, is that, look, I work with a, a lot of moms and I, I understand that um, some days can feel impossible with all the responsibilities, with all of the, the emotions, with all of the, the things that you didn't know that you had to do and the decisions you had to make that, that you're just thinking about, like, how will this affect my child's life mm -hmm. and, and the finances and just like life as a, as a parent or a mom, I under, I understand that. And I want to say that, that when I'm, when I'm holding space, when I'm teaching, I am just opening doors for you mm. to what's already inside you. I truly believe that if somebody opens the door for you and opens uh, opens the pathway for you, you will know how to navigate yourself confidently. Mm. You'll know what to bring into your into your family life, mm. and it can be as simple as you don't have to have all the to dos. Okay, it's good to learn and unlearn and, and read the books, but you don't have to do all that. That has to be your complete focus all the, all the fucking time. You can't load that on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, how I teach is here here is a pathway and here are openings for you. And and this course is really designed keeping that in mind and like just asking people to just press play and listen to receive. Mm -hmm. Maybe press play again another day and listen and and receive. Mm -hmm. So I, I do want to throw that out there because I know it's we're we're zoomed out we're screened out we talked about this we're zoomed out we're screened out we're coursed out having to do having deadlines having feeling the guilt and judgment of like when we sign up for something and then don't do it some people are are, are gonna sign up and not and not show up and just get the recordings and listen when they want to listen mm -hmm. <laughs> you know like to even though that's, that's an option i'm like okay i'm in like that makes uh, sense for yeah. me because i just like time yes. and space right now, like with my family, I need to be physically present. And I have like a couple dying relatives. I have a dear sister oh, going through like a domestic violence case, like lots of shit oh. just on. And I want this. Like the fact that it can be a both and like my life is going all over and it's beautiful. Thank God for my rising ritual yes. morning practices. Like that, this, <laughs> this is the time, you know? Um, and yes. I'm just here in like the absolute awe that you've created this and to know that mm -hmm. if you're interested in the moms and race course even if you're not a mom mm -hmm. but planning to be a mom someday even if you have yes. children in your life that are influenced by you nieces nephews cousins that this course can be a step in the right direction of how we want to radiate what we know to be true that all beings are one being while keeping our eyes wide open that on our planet right now the systems of oppression have it be that we're not all one being and we need to address what that looks like in order to get to the place of oneness but we have to know yes. where that is on our gps if we don't know current location we can't no fuck get to our desired destination we got to know the what is and that's what i really am loving about anti-racism work but especially what you're channeling what i got to see on your website mm -hmm. it was just like yes 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 Yes, no blame, no shame, but yes. like, let's get real. Like, let's talk real uh -huh. too. Yeah, so um, all, all of that, yes to, to all of that. And, and I want to provide some clarity as well because um, one of the things about, about the work that I'm doing is that I understand that not everybody can pay $300, $400 yeah. to work with me or, or, you know, I know groups that want to work with me and they can't shell out thousands of, of dollars. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's important to me. And I always do this. If I hear concern, 
um, then I'm going to try to figure out a way to, to, to make it work. So just for clarity's sake, you might see on my Facebook right now, uh, me doing Moms and Race course and it started this, this week, right? So I, I have like my normal Moms and Race course is $400 that started this week. This is something different. Mm -hmm. This is Moms and Race special community course. It is not on my Facebook page. The reason I did this is because I have a, a whole list of people who are like, I want this, but I really cannot pay $400. And I understand that there was times when I wanted so badly to, to do something, some work or, and, you know, didn't have like $10 to rub to my name. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, so what I, what I created after talking to a couple community leaders is that is a, a community course where look, come together, sign up on the, in the enrollment page. And what we're trying to do is just ask everybody, bring two people. We yes, all I love groups. this. And we all know, uh, a, you know, either it's a group of moms or online group have been talking about it, talking about it, talking about mm -hmm. it, and are in that position where they're like starting to forget about it, forget about it, not have time, get busy, whatever. This is a really good time. If we all together work and just everybody bring two people at least, then we get 35 people. If, we're, if we get over 35 people, then the course is uh, $97 for, for everyone. That's amazing. Um, so, yeah. I love this yeah. model. I love this structure and I love what you're creating. Um, yes. Could I also invite in the possibility, like those of us who are coming in and want to contribute more, like, is there a way that if I was like, you know what, for this call and recording, yes. I don't want to be in the moms and race course where I have to show up on a call. I want just like the recordings and I want to donate two, two, two to this and maybe yeah. like, just let that be a contribution to you and this work that you're doing. Could we have that option as well? That is, that is also an option, and, and this is how it works. So if you come to the, the link that we're going to share, there's a, like it just says, this is what we're doing. And then there's a sign up and enrollment form. And that form does not ask you for money. It just says, hey, you know that what the agreement is, is you're going you're gonna to bring a couple of friends. And then like in a couple of weeks, so we start March 14th, in a couple of weeks, I will send out the, the enrollment thing and we'll have options for like, you know, hundred dollars or have options for, for more, if that's, if that's what you want to do. Love it. Um, yes. And so th there will be that. And then, um, oh, what was the other thing I was going to say? I think that's it. Okay. Is that it? Cool. I don't know. <laughs> Perfect. It was great. This is great. Yeah, I just, so, I just am so jazzed yeah. of the style that you're doing. So just to be clear, it's like, you're interested in the program, you fill out the form. Yes. And then you think about two people that you could bring to this as well. Right now it's like a hundred bucks a piece. I mean, even yes. what you're getting for this 35 people, a hundred bucks a piece, $3,500 for her giving like incredible conversational pieces for how mm -hmm. to bridge the conversation between the separation of what is racism and race into oneness without the bypass ick and without the blame and shame of who did what and who said what, but being very real about the what is and how we can speak about this in a good way. Like this is, and the work that it has taken you to get here, Alexandra, I just want to acknowledge like, mm. to be able to offer this to a diverse community as a black presenting woman and how you identify and how you show up, like just the personal processes, everything from beautiful joy and elation to extreme anger and rage, like, and all the investments you've made along the way, what you've paid, mm -hmm. the time, the energy, the priestessing, the purging, like that whole thing. I just want to take yes. a moment to acknowledge you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And that is also yeah. what we are, what we would be contributing towards, right? Is like supporting you yes. in continuing this forward. And as your friend, as someone who's admired you on Facebook, that's important to me because you're amazing. Yeah. I thank you for acknowledging that. And it's not just contributing to that 10% of everything goes to a group of kids that I work, that I work with and support in West Africa. Amazing. So, yeah. So all the courses that I, I do as starting 2021, 10% always goes to, to that group. And if we get 35 people that supports, uh, once we get past that, that supports all of those children for almost two months. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's a really big deal because of how they're being supported for was, you know, out of my mentor's pocket, she's yeah. a teacher, and, you know, out of my own, like my own pocket. And yeah, so, so that's, that's a really big deal too. And, and all that information is, is on, on the, the page, the, all the, which is linked here yeah. in the video and it's linked in the video. Yes. I have to leave in one minute, but the last piece that I want to leave us with is this piece that you were talking about abundance. Cause I think there's so much going around about abundance and abundance coaches and the six figure clients and blah, 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 blah. And true yes. abundance <laughs> is when our wealth is channeled for what is the most suffering on the planet. 
Yes. It's not a Gucci bag. It's not a motherfucking car. It's not a dream home. Those are nice things. But true wealth in its truest form, in my experience, if it's truly a spiritual path, goes to those who are suffering the most on the planet. So I just want to acknowledge you and, and we can have beautiful things in our home and we can have beautiful lives. Absolutely. And that 10% tithing, like that's the beginning of the wealth. That that's the indicator yes. of wealth that I am channeling this for those who are suffering on the planet, because this is a tool that can help them rise too, because wealth is seen that we can support that rising for all. So I just yeah. acknowledge you again, 10% tithing is, is just the way we've been doing it for thousands of years for those who remember and those who know. So honor that deeply, sis. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you for opening this up to your group. Anybody can uh, message me and we'll I'll post the, the link again. Anybody can message me who's like, like, wait, what do we do again? I, I just want people to get this. So, totally. Me too. So, yeah. I'm, I'm totally there. Anybody who wants me to show up in their groups for a short chat like this, mm -hmm. please let me know. Um, I'm, I'm here for that. So uh, thank you so much. My I really pleasure. appreciate you opening and, and your, your powerful words. I've always been moved by, mm. by what you are bringing into the world. And mm. I'm, I'm so glad that we are, are connected and blessing sister. Blessings. Thank you. Yes, please more. Thank you. I love you. I support you. I want to stand next to you arm to arm in this, in this shift and just like, let people know, like, she's my sis. I trust her. And like, let's do this thing. So thank you for coming yeah. on. And I look forward to more. Bless. <laughs>